is who you are, where you went to work, who you met there, how did it go, how did those introductions go. Tell me if you were talking to a certain person. So, any questions? Yes. yes. What I did. And this is you. So, it's you. Okay? Any other questions? All right. So, let's get to work. Is this program called the last word that we have talked about for the last few weeks of the things that we need to be aware of and show, not just talk about, but show. Okay, let's start with you again. Um, presentation, how do you present yourself to other people? Very good, excellent. Anyone else? You know, you can look at your notes from previous classes to answer some of these questions, boys and girls. It can give us an idea if we would like to have or work in a business that either involves children or involves the managing paperwork. Excellent. What other kinds of things are you going to be experiencing? Yeah. Huh? Matters. Professional matters, right? What do those include? What are some of those things that we need to be good at and we need to follow going into the professional world? I mean, even the students will need this, but we've been talking about it, to transfer it to our workplaces. What are some of those those things? Your action, your action is to answer professionally, a smile, the way, the way you will hear it. Excellent. And what do we talk about a handshake? Firm, a firm handshake. Why should it be a firm handshake? What does it what does it show to others? Um, it, it shows that you are someone call it, it shows that you're a professional and excellent. Excellent. And confident. Professionalism and confidence. Can you pick the next person? Okay. Um how you use your words, like you can't talk like a ghetto person, like it was a good, it was a good dog, um, you just use work for you and then you leave two hours, you know, you know. Excellent, so professional language, right? Professional vocabulary, very serious and professional. Excellent, good, all right, so let's, let's share out now to the class. So everybody got a chance to at least talk about what happened and how they felt. Now I'm going to be calling on some people, but you have to tell me about the other person's experience, not your own. So that's why listening skills were very important, right? Okay. Is there a volunteer? All right. Okay. So, so right. Leslie, she went. Uh, uh, she went. She was in a fifth grade class, and the teacher asked her to uh, help a little girl. Uh, that she had come from France to read, and she said that it was frustrating because the girl had a hard time, and it was like frustrating to teach her how to read and how to understand the words. Okay, did she talk? Did Destiny talk about how she felt helping the little girl? Uh, yeah, she said she said she was frustrated because she didn't know how to read, so it was hard to teach her. Okay, and she'll be able to remember. So think about these boys and girls. Heads up, if you're working with children. In about two months, you will have to be teaching a lesson. I'm going to teach you what a lesson plan is, how to write a lesson plan. Yes, please. How to write a lesson plan. You're going to be talking to the teachers so that they can give you their approval that you can teach this lesson to either a small group of kids or the whole class. That's you guys, right? Hands-on experience, okay? We, um, one of the ways that we do that is they create a scrapbook, and the scrapbook could be um, 
uh, arts and craft where they created an album with all their, uh, you know, everything that they've experienced and pictures and they learn about the site and their history, you know, who they serve. Um, they'll have to do interviews at the site, you know, how did you become interested in becoming the director or working with these, this population. So um, they can also do a digital scrapbook. So it could become more of um, um, a memory through their computer usage, or they could uh, also create a PowerPoint presentation. So evaluation um, takes place through participation in class. Um, it also takes place through their reflections. Um, so they keep uh, a journal, which could be a notebook, and that's where they write their weekly reflections on what was happening. Uh, they will also have to do a resume, so that's another little project. We'll talk about what that is and how it's useful, and um, so they'll have to create their resumes. Uh, the projects that the different kids get, like the lesson, uh, there's a rubric for their, um, for their scrapbook. There's a rubric so that they know the, the things that they need to incorporate into, into their scrapbooking project. Um, and all of that combined is what gets them their grade. Today, the project-based learning that we do here has more to do with teachers still in teacher teams working together, working on projects together, in um, representing different content areas, but really using projects as a base of student, students being able to show what they, what they learn from the unit. So the project that they do has, lot, has everything to do with the application of the skills and the content that they learn in, in that particular unit. And so sometimes it's very um, performance-based. Um, we find that we're able to get a lot more, a lot more information in terms of what students learn if they apply what they learn much more than sitting down and taking a test where that has multiple choice and has essays. And so um, I think that in a traditional setting, what happens is um, we don't give the students this trust until they're in high school or until college. But with our kids, because they're so involved in what they're learning, they're excited by it. You know, um, they're excited. They're, and being excited means that they're not passive in their learning. They're much more um, active in, the, in, in their own learning. <laughs> Hey! <laughs>